I think the importance of following your passion can't be uh, overstated. It's everything. If you're not doing something you like, what are you doing? But if every day you're excited to go there and excited to work on something, to learn something new, to better yourself in that area, it's just gonna lead to more success, more people are gonna notice what you're doing, more people are gonna give you opportunities. Following your passion is probably the, the number one business advice anyone could ever have. Um, so an interesting fact about Hennessy is we're really a generational company. We're on eight generations of both the Hennessy family and our master blenders family, the Fidu family. And what this leads to is interesting decision making for a business because a short term plan is a three year plan, a mid term plan is 10 years, but a long term plan is a generation. And that really helps the business to stay kind of aligned over the 259 years they've been around. My role with Hennessy is the global brand ambassador, but also manager of trade advocacy. So what my job entails on the ambassador side is educating on Hennessy, letting people understand the category of cognac and therefore what Hennessy represents. And then on the other side, as the manager of trade advocacy, I'm creating moments for ambassadors like myself to be in the markets, be uh, around the world, be with bartenders, um, be with consumers, people that love Hennessy or people that don't know about it yet, and to come away with a great experience where they understand the brand and they're also left with a, a valuable memory. The moments I remember most at Humber were we had access keys to get in at all times because we needed the editing bays. So I remember very distinctly leaving what at the time was a nightclub bar job at like 3.30 in the morning, driving to Humber, editing until I would need to render everything. The rendering would take quite a lot of time back then. I would fall asleep on the floor rendering it and then wake up and go to class. When I first came out of Humber with my film and television program, I worked in a number of things. I volunteered on short films, I volunteered on longer films, and then I found my place at Saatchi & Saatchi, which was an advertising sort of giant globally, but had a small office, a very creatively driven office in Toronto. Uh, and actually, the I'd done my cooperative learning part of my course there, uh, and they had hired me afterwards as a junior producer. The senior producer at Saatchi & Saatchi was also a Humber alumnus uh, had that had gone through the film program. So we sort of knew we had the same sort of bedrock of, of what to go on. And we worked on, on a lot of different programs. As a junior producer, especially for a Canadian advertising company, I got to work on projects that start to finish that were maybe a month long from ideation all the way through the execution of the, the end commercial, um, all the way up to programs that took you know many, many months, much bigger budgets and, and bigger teams working on it. So yeah, it was an exciting time getting out of school and getting to immediately delve into something. And in my line of work now, I'm, I have to take a project from the idea phase all the way through the execution. And that's really what a producer does. They pick the people on their team, they, they run with the idea. They have to be sort of, I was described at Humber, they, the producer was the most uh, creative person on the team because they had to kind of come up with it all at the beginning. And those skills definitely translated to what I'm doing today. Currently, my, my role came to be because I was the US national ambassador. Uh, and that role came to be because I competed in cocktail competitions while running bar programs in Toronto. And one of those cocktail competitions saw me compete on the global scale in New York, all filmed for, for the whole process. Uh, it was for a sister brand to Hennessy. Hennessy saw those videos of me presenting up on stage, making cocktails, and they thought I'd be a good fit for Hennessy. Great at the time, because when I interviewed for Hennessy about four days after that competition ended, uh, I ended that interview with telling them my dog's name was Hennessy, because my dog at the time's name was Hennessy, so it was kind of fortuitous that I ended up with them. When you have a great cocktail, it should have the spirit as a base, as a strength, but then you wanna weaken that somehow, whether that's through stirring or shaking or adding a mixer of some kind. You want sour, sweet. If you have sour, then you're gonna need some sweet to balance that out. That's gonna create complexity. Uh, or you can have bitter, um, and bitter is gonna add another element to the table, whether that's to balance out the, the sweet or bring complexity to the drink in a lot of ways. At the end of the day, 
um, balance and complexity make a good drink, but um, I also feel like less is more. My favorite Hennessy cocktail recipe is a Hennessy VSOP Sazerac. It's a classic cocktail that dates back to the 1850s. It is a good amount of Hennessy. Um, basically, it's like a Hennessy old fashioned, but you've got two parts Hennessy. You're gonna add a splash or like a, two teaspoons of a sweetener. Traditionally, that would be simple syrup, just sugar and water put together, but you could mix it up and make maple syrup or honey. But yeah, just that simple syrup. And then five dashes of Peychaud bitters. This is all stirred on ice and poured into a glass that has been washed or rinsed with absinthe. And when we say that, you could do a spritz from an atomizer, or you could just put a little bit of absinthe in the glass, swirl it around and dump it out. Then finally, once the drink has been strained into that glass, a lemon twist, and it's got all that lightness from the lemon, the absinthe, the Peychaud bitters are all very light or vegetal elements. Uh, with the rich nature of Hennessy VSOP Cognac, makes this really beautiful balance. What I enjoy most about my job is really the education uh, and putting bartenders on a spotlight. So Cognac is not a well-known spirit. It's been around for hundreds of years. Hennessy is not even the oldest Cognac and it's 259 years old. Um, and so people have sort of forgotten about Cognac. They, they know it, they maybe know the name, they know the name Hennessy, but they don't really know what Cognac is. So the education for me is key. I get to introduce people to the entire world of Cognac where they, they don't know much about it. Now they know about Cognac, which means they know about brandy. So Cognac is the king of the brandies and that's, that can be exciting. So when Hennessy started um, thinking about this in the 1960s, they were the first company to get a 14,001 TR designation, which is a commitment towards carbon neutrality, which means every year you have to get better and better and better. And whether that be your packaging, whether that be the process of how you make your product, all of these things come into play. Fast forward to today, all of the town of Cognac is powered by biogas, which is made from the offshoots of the leftovers of Cognac production. That biogas factory was made by Hennessy and some of the other Cognac companies and now powers all the production of Cognac. So you get a little bit closer every day and then in the end you see massive results. And that's Hennessy's commitment to get incrementally better every day. We just launched uh, the new Hennessy VSOP bottle is 100% uh, recyclable. So every single, like the wooden, the wooden top, the cork, you know, everything on it can be recycled. There's less ink in the packaging, all of it. I just launched a podcast recently called Bartenders in Bars with Booze, sort of stolen from comedians in cars with coffee. But the idea was that in my role with Hennessy, I get to travel the world visiting amazing places, some places that are well known around the world for their bars and restaurants, you know, the New Yorks, the Paris, the Londons of the world. But I also get to visit some hidden gems that people don't know about. And the point of my podcast was really to, to let everybody meet some of these amazing minds in the hospitality and bar world, whether they be from the New Yorks, Paris, Londons of the world, or whether they be from, uh, you know, the Detroits, the Whitefish Montanas, the, you know, Malaysia, Indonesia, Australia's of the world. Um, all of this is in the endeavor to, to look at our hospitality industry and, and see the people in it because no one really comes from the same background. We all sort of ended up there somehow and, uh, and that's the kind of idea behind the podcast. It's interesting launching a podcast and, and being out of film and television for so long and now coming back and kind of using those muscles again. Um, ultimately, it's, I'm sort of angry at the new world of film because everything's so easy. I learned when digital cameras were just like coming in and now, you know, my, my phone setup or my podcast is filmed with three iPhones all filming in 4K. That somewhat makes me angry. Like I wish I could go to film now with all the tools that we have. Um, but it's also, it's also really fun and the core of it, the core of the education was, you know, check your equipment, make sure you have it all, get the shot, you know, make sure your sound is good. All of that is, is coming back and, and sort of like reteaching myself all of it. Um, but yeah, it's been a fun journey to go back and revisit it all. I think if I were to give any words of wisdom to anybody, it would be 
you know, what you start at now doesn't need to be where you end up and you don't know where the world is going to take you. So take that thirst for knowledge, whatever you have an interest in, what you imagine it's going to take you to now might entirely explode or supernova on you and end up in a million different other directions. So take your knowledge, do what you say, and try to be the best at whatever you're doing. And somebody's gonna notice you, somebody's gonna offer you opportunities. Take those opportunities, learn from them, and keep growing. I'm Jordan Bushel. I'm Humber grad year 2004 from film and television production. Currently, I am the global brand ambassador for Hennessy Cognac and manager of trade advocacy. Thanks for listening.